Focus. Arie, Innovate, Enable. In business, risk is given. And all organizations world over have to take certain level of risk in order to generate returns to the stakeholders. Yet, I don't think any organization factored for 26-11 Mumbai terror attack or Lehman Brothers crisis in 2008. So effectively, what are the new age risks? And how are organizations surmounting these new challenges? That is our talking point. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. For my begin by asking you, Mr. Jivasa, low probability event that have had catastrophic consequences for the country and the corporates, 26-11 terror attack, 9-11 terror attacks, or Lehman Brothers crisis. Have these events made corporate and insurance company relook at the term risk? I want all the panelists to respond to this question. Unfortunately, I'll say that insurance is yet not got the same standing as a profession or importance by corporates. Okay. And all these events are definitely making them see insurance in a more serious light and look at insurance managers more seriously and their role. Okay. I personally feel that industry in India needs to be taking this more as something as a risk management center than a cost center and uh, you know giving it more importance like they do with say a finance function or an HR function or a marketing function. So right from academic institutions to corporates to the insurance companies all need to take the profession of insurance first seriously so that we can attend to this risk because today as you have asked a very valid question. The worry is that if we don't take this thing seriously, it can cripple an organization. And the balance sheet of the company and the bottom line, if both have to be protected, then it is very important that we look at these incidents seriously and all corporates give insurance the due which it deserves. Okay, let me get Sanjay. Somebody will be underwriting this. How do you view it? I look at uh, you know, the entire focus on risk management with the fundamental you know, part of every enterprise, actually. Uh, you know, there are various risks, but, you know, currently we, in this kind of world, you know, given the incidents which you have mentioned, mm. the lot of risks which are emerging, which are not only complex, they're volatile, they're uncertain, and they have huge, you know, implications as, you know, sir said, on the balance sheet as well as on profitability. Given that, you know, there is no way you can, you know, ignore risk management. Okay. Having said that, uh, you know, there are only a few, you know, some things you know, which are out of your control, some things which are in your control. What is in your control is to be able to understand these risks, quantify these risks and be able to you know, you know manage this risk much better either through transfers through insurance okay. or be able to prevent it if, if possible but the the idea of you know I would totally endorse the fact the corporates have woken up and the need to really really look at risk management as a core strategic function by itself actually. Okay, let me get the academic view professor but how do you view it theoretically we generally uh, define risk as anything arising from unknown and when we say that, you know, low probability events, uh, one of the major uh, calculation that insurance companies do for charging premium is how many times does it occur. So, most of the times company uh, take insurance only as a function of compliance and okay. it's not a voluntary thing that they get into. And in today's time, like you said, 9-11, it's not that people didn't know uh, that a cockpit of an airplane is the most uh, important part and yeah. you should insure it. But uh, most of the airlines before 9-11 used to treat it as an expense. And why should they, you know, spend money on that? But uh, post 9-11, there are solutions which were created which made a cockpit much more bulletproof, secure, and people wanted to spend money on it. And also, uh, insurance companies started uh, reimbursing for, uh, you know, a, an air hijack, which was not yeah. the case before that. True. So, as uh, events occur many times, uh, it's not that we don't know what is going to happen, but uh, probably... Uh, only an event has to occur for us to recognize it as a formidable one to you know secure yourself against it. Okay, let me get the consultant in. Mr. Kapoor, is it possible to make companies less vulnerable to this kind of event? See, low probability uh, events are very difficult to um, predict or uh, uh, identify uh, much in advance. I think what is important really is that uh, uh, you know in specific cases that you've uh, highlighted is that how is the organization geared to keep on continuing uh, and recovering from such an impact uh, that happens. So of course one is that you look at insurance and the second is that do is risk, is disaster recovery or business continuity planning an integral part of the overall strategy of an organization. And if it is part of, the strat of a strategy of the organization, does it actually result in that organization allocating uh, adequate funds towards it 
so that if any eventual eventuality happens the company is able to get back up on its feet fairly quickly and hence the impact on the financials um, and the assets of the organization is minimized and it's able to continue doing business so very typically what are the major risk indian companies face according to you uh, with my 31 years of experience in this okay. particular field of insurance risk management as mm. i call it mm. when i started my career the thing which one would look at it was property insurance loss of profits and things like that but over a period of time the subject has evolved so much that today that's gone into the background what we are looking at is liability risk dno risks you okay. know with the new companies act cyber risks and as our group went on expanding and we went into uh, pollution risks environmental risks okay strategic risk so today there has been a total sea change from what i started with and what i'm doing and today you really require experts who are having this as their core subject to get into the various diverse risks to which we are exposed to right from environmental in the water to pollution in the air to cyber risk to suppose we are in the business of bpos so the uh, claims which somebody could put in for wrong calls or for unwarranted calls what do you call uh, you know disturbing somebody who is already having a dnd especially in the us where we deal with or in canada uh, you know where mm -hmm. the laws are very yeah. strict and yeah. tough so you know it's going a total sea change and what we want is with the private sector insurers coming people like icic and lombard who are the leaders that they should be focusing more on their role to develop more and better covers for the industry with the complex uh, risk with the industry now faces how open insurance company like yours do the risk profile of your clients i i believe now it's become the basic kind of you know uh, sort of uh, agenda for us now okay. given uh, uh, you know a complex world where risks are changing every day and where you know you need to you know make sure that the client understands those risks you know one is a question of not understanding and hence being blind to it and not taking we don't want that situation to come we want him to be very very aware of the risks you know they you know not you not bet on the you know balance sheet risks <laughs> okay. you know which, which which are the low well, low probability, low probability and high risk or you know additional you know operational risks they they should be aware should be able to have uh, develop plans to mitigate it with 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 experts in place that's where we want you know people to be aware of and we carry out a lot of awareness program and we also carry out a lot of uh, you know risk management programs case to case with the uh, you know client to make sure that we are you know able to work on mitigation prevention and some of them you know we find a you know transfer solution for you some well, of let me get Mr Kapoor and Mr Kapoor what according to you are the new age risk when you look at your client's portfolio i think the number one risk uh, uh, that is emerging out when i look at and which is you know there and it's stable on all boards is actually the cyber security risk so the cyber security risk it seems to be the number one which is uh, you know a big issue across industries and actually uh, um, you know industries have lost uh, significant amounts of money or information which has been critical uh, to the organization the other uh, area is like uh, sorry the other area is of course uh, environmental sustainability risks which are which are important and which are becoming um uh, you know more uh, integral to how the organization strategy is evolving in terms of expansion in terms of sustainability of their operations and i think those are areas which are still um, untouched uh, to a large extent but you know we are seeing a lot of conversations around uh, that as well and you know the point on experts that becomes very 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 relevant because uh, some of these areas are um, uh, you know require that uh, uh, expertise or uh, to to actually look at and to identify and in uh, even geographical risks so i think uh, you know where companies are planning to expand into africa to latin america where they already have operations i mean those geographies are critical in terms of understanding them the risks that are associated with those geographies uh, with respect to running or owning businesses i think those are also some key risks which people are looking at and uh, evaluating uh, Okay, let me get Professor. Professor, it's very interesting survey done by Fiki Pinkerton. Over the last three years, they are saying there are five key risks that affect corporate India. Top of them is corruption, bribery, and corporate frauds. This is number one risk. Number two is political and governance instability. Number three is crime, uh, crimes, corporate frauds, scams. Four is information and cyber insecurity. Eleventh and twelfth are natural disaster and fire, which was once upon a big risk. So, the risk here is known. Yet companies take a beating. why um the reason for this is uh, the kind of dynamism that we have uh, we see in today in the global environment um a year back we were talking about you know rising crude oil prices yeah. and for the first time in five decades probably you would have seen that the opec nations are not deciding the price of crude oil 
someone else uh, because shale gas was dis was discovered us uh, uh, is now dictating the terms of crude oil okay. and uh, probably you have a very different kind of challenge that companies today face where people have probably gone for hedging or forward contracts bought crude oil at 120 dollars a barrel price and today the prices have gone down so the kind of dynamic nature that's there in the global economy you know uh, how businesses are done is also causing uh, to a great amount this kind of uh, challenge that is arising in the survey that you said uh, uh, there's a very important uh, the top two are uh, regulatory risk yeah. now uh, i'm not too sure whether any company covers for regulatory risk and uh, the insurance manager yeah you know, we do cover political we, risk. We, co we cover uh, political risk. We okay. also cover uh, a lot of liability risk which arise out of this. You know, more in terms of defense costs. You know, which, which you need to, uh, you know, yeah, you need to, you know, to, to, you know, stem regulatory action if there's mm -hmm. been, you know, some accusation against your directors and all of that, which normally come in terms of fines. So we we tend to, you know, put up a defense for that in case that's wrong and all of that. As a measurement of risk and this pri pricing, has it changed over the years? I think yes, it has. It has changed, you know, definitely over the years. You know, the, the the aspect of exposure and the interconnectedness of risk has come in very very strongly in your measurement of risk. Okay. Exactly, you know, as I talked about suppliers yeah. risk, customers risk. You know, you know, all of these business interruption risk can actually be morphed into contingent business interruption, and then you have all these kinds of liability risk which we talked about, which are you know coming in along with things like cyber threat, you know, okay. coming in and newer newer kinds of risk which could have long tail exposures for the clients. You know, those those have meant that you know we are now looking at risk in a very very different manner than the way we used to look at it. You know, even say 15 years earlier in India. But uh, at the cost of reputation, I would like to say that uh, I yet feel that uh, more awareness should be created because industry yet does not know at, at least the Indian industry doing global business except mm -hmm. for a few groups like ours they really don't know the type of huge exposures they are facing okay and like sanjay said you know the type of risk which can be covered because you see this hit takes once and people take in india as unfortunately this is a cost center and it, uh, for a moment they should put that aside and not look at it as a cost center but look at more as a risk management thing and really work seriously on this and i think the top management in their annual business plans or in their brainstorming sessions they should ensure that just like they invite an expert say on finance or uh, HR or something they should also invite experts on insurance risk management who can actually show and tell the top management or the board of each company the type of risks they are facing and how they should try to at least mitigate them because as like professor said is there it a may not be possible to professor. cover all, all the risks yeah. but at least some of those risks you know rather than waiting for it to you getting hit with it it's best you take action before you get hit with it but uh, professor when talking about what Mr. Jivasa said, is there a syllabus of risk management in your institute or among all the institutes you offer? Yes, I right. think that's a good so, point. Uh, globally, uh, uh, you pick up any risk management syllabus, you would typically be talking about known risk. Okay. And here what we are talking about is uh, something which is going to occur because of uh, government regulation or uh, a major economic event. The basic uh, uh, principle of actuarial sciences, it works on probability. Okay. So, uh, the event has to first occur once and maybe more than once for it to be considered as a formidable challenge. So you pick up any theoretical book, uh, you, you would find that we still work with most of the areas that we work with are known risk and um, that's where the challenge comes in. And uh, uh, many times even known risk have caused a problem to companies like uh, I hedge myself against currency oh. and uh, when this was done in 2008 companies like AIG went bankrupt. So oh. even an insurance company can go bankrupt uh, while providing a calculated risk cover to their clients. So, uh, so, so it's, uh, let it's, me get, uh, yeah, I sorry. just wanted to have a point here, you know, word education is all pervasive now on risk actually, even yeah. within corporates and let's say, you know, using, you know, corporates, uh, you know, and, you know, you know, very good consultants, we need to flow down this whole understanding of risk management down to the last level you know you know we have had situations when if a supervisor is made you know aware of risk he will before he leaves a shift okay. will tell that there is something wrong with this thing and it can lead to a blowout okay globally how do organizations uh, yeah. respond to risk have you come across organizational policies and structures that have impressed you? Good question. But before that, just one thing from where Sanjay said. Uh -huh. The important thing is, yes, the, you know, that is the point which he has made. You know, an airline, when it goes down, there is such a hua made across the globe. But what about road safety? What about railway safety? There are so many millions of people dying on the road. Why is there no risk management being done on that? 
Why is no risk management done on real accidents or the normal things where millions of people die across the world and one airline goes down, one aircraft and there's so much noise made on it or so much attention is focused. We need to think on this, you know, I just wanted to make this point. So any organization that has impressed you abroad? that you want to template those uh, kind of things in India? You see, many of these organizations abroad, they're the big ones, you know, they have learned from their mistakes. BP, Shell, your uh, telecom companies, yeah. they have learned from their mistakes. But again, there, you know, maybe the awareness is much more. The industry is much more professional. There yeah. are many people who, uh, you know, who really make this as a profession. And the regulatory framework is so strong there that there is no other way but to get into this. And ap apart from that, suppose if there's a per people loss here, you know, for, for some time there'll be an issue made if some people die. But there even if one person dies, there's so much of an yeah. issue. There, there is no choice but to see that when it comes to protecting people, protecting your assets, because it's not only the asset or the people, it's the way it can spoil your reputation. <laughs> Let me get uh, Mr. Kapoor in. Kapoor, a very really different question. I want the professor also to respond. Are quarterly pressure conforming to regulatory standards, killing the an entrepreneur's risk-taking ability? You know, I think uh, uh, I would say that uh, maybe in the in the beginning, see, uh -huh. we are in India at least. We are now starting to think of it, and 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 most companies are worried as to how would it get implemented, and there would be a whole host of compliance activities which would uh, come quarter on quarter. But frankly, you know, I've, you know, there's that saying that brakes in a car oh. are actually not to stop the car, but to make it go faster. And I would look at it in this one. way. It's yeah. only that first we need, once we start implementing this, our risk-taking ability, which, in a, which is absolutely critical for an entrepreneur, would become more transparent and clear. So compliance, like I said, is just one part of it. And okay. I think if we put the right framework, the right structure, get the right experts in place, that would be pretty much taken care of. I think what would be more important is the risk-taking ability which would come out of those discussions or that what could go wrong culture in an organization which would help an entrepreneur go, go further. So let me get the academic view. Theoretically, it's uh, true because uh, uh, we're talking about short-term uh, profitability versus long-term sustainability mm. and uh, we're expecting too much from uh, one person to deliver. So we want the CEO to also do compliance, we also we want him to innovate, we also want him to do different things so that the uh, top line grows. So uh, probably you, uh, there's a right thought that you know you have a separate set of people who would be just taking care of the compliance and the risk part of it and let one set of individuals keep constantly innovating uh, how to grow the market and that's what in Apple uh, they have done it successfully. Yeah. You have a separate team which is going to just talk about what new can happen and uh, many times it's also about uh, timing. It's not that the uh, smartphone or the touch screen technology was not there. In 97, okay. we did have palm top and all true, that. True. But it didn't pick up. But the environment now is such that you have huge connectivity. Everyone, the ecosystem is created. So it also helps uh, many times if a company is ahead of time, then also, uh, you know, uh, people might say that it's too conservative. And uh, But all it is trying to do is protect its uh, shareholders, you know, wealth. But then probably people would not agree with it. Sanjay, what are the key mistakes made by executives in identification of risk? You know, I feel very bad about it when there are known risks and people have not, you know, given adequate, you know, importance to it. Unknown risks, we all don't know. You know, so, so we, yeah. we can all be absolved of it. Tomorrow there's a meteorite striking us, nobody would be blamed for it. But what we, we could get blamed for is things which you are aware of and which you should have taken action either to mitigate it or prevent it, spread the risk culture and all of that. Because to me the biggest important thing uh, you have said, risk and reputation go together. You know, you can't see it in isolation. If you're not managing your risk, you know, you, know, you not only will you have business sustainability issues, but you have issues around reputation, around quality. So it's a core, you know, it's the core of the business. You know, you, yeah. you, you can't really ignore it. And people who not it have paid it you know paid through it either in, on sustainability front either on reputation front or some other front but the underlying reason is because they ignored risk that's the reason why i you know brought in the airline industry ultimately you can't ignore say, safety if you want you know the concord to fly you have to look at safety should risk management be integrated with ceo's vision and plan 30 seconds i mean it's such a subject close to my heart it's a definite thing the day this is done all organizations will notice the difference we do it to a great extent and it should be forming part of the annual business plan. It should be forming part of all strategic planning. And organizations will see the difference if they try integrate this and not look at it as a cost center. Yes, it should form an integral part of a CEO's vision and his annual business plan.
Okay. For me, just the one one line answer to that. You know, you know, in the organization tomorrow, you know, the CEO will be the chief risk officer. Yeah. He he has to True. you know become the chief risk officer. Professor? Yeah, not only operational risk, which uh, traditionally CEO would be uh, definitely insuring, but also strategic risk is what uh, a CEO should uh, insure for. Okay, Mr. Kapoor, final word to you. No, absolutely, I, I completely agree and echo the same sentiment uh, that risks should par be part of the business strategy, they should be part of the overall business plan. Uh, one should look at it from a perspective, preventive risks, risks which can be prevented, risks uh, which are strategic in nature, risks which are unpredictable. So there has to be that leeway for risks which are unpredictable as well. But surely it has to be part of the overall organization uh, planning process uh, at the highest level for it to be effective. Well, there is a unanimity that corporate risk management should be integrated with the CEO's vision and plan. Gentlemen, thanks for being on the show. It was a pleasure talking to you. Focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable.